The One World Film Festival is an international documentary festival that takes place annually in Prague. Documentaries covering human rights issues are submitted by filmmakers from all over the world. The film Too Close is a feature-length documentary that covers the topic of sexual abuse and the fallout which results. Director Botan Prusok tells the story of a family who navigates recovery from a traumatic experience. My name is Botan Pushak, I'm from Romania and Too Close is my first uh, feature documentary. It was fascinating to me, this general thing, what happens to us when we experience something which we feel that pulls the rug under us and we don't know how to define ourselves as humans when our work life or our personal lives are shattered. What do we do then in the most extreme circumstances? Andrea. My, the main character of Too Close decided to tell me the story of her past. So that first meeting when she told me that served actually as a catalyst to start thinking in uh, storytelling. From that first meeting it was a very long process until we started shooting actually because of the delicate nature of the subject. Because it didn't only concern abuse, it concerned abuse against children and sexual abuse. I talked to a lot of uh, therapists and I read a lot of uh, books on the topic and I consulted with uh, other survivors and watched a ton of, um, of films, documentaries and fiction films in the topic to see how others uh, dared to touch, touch upon this topic. Covering sensitive topics comes with many challenges all of which Pusak had to take into consideration when filming Too Close, raising fundamental questions on how to properly tell this family story. They were in a moment in their life where they were in a moment of trauma healing when they felt the need to talk about it. So it was not a question whether they want to do the movie or not because they wanted it, both Andrea and her daughter Pirko. But still, the question came up. How should we tell this story? How, what should be the main point of view? What, um, how, how should we portray the children? Should we portray them at all? Uh, especially because it was a need of theirs to be portrayed, but it, that's not that easy, you know. We had a, a deal with them uh, that we will only approach the village in a more, more um, intruding way after they manage to move out from them, to not cause any disturbance. After they managed to move, I basically had to go into like this Aaron Brockovich sort of mode and to go from house to house and find those people who are willing to share their views on the story. And uh, luckily there, there were a couple of, more than a couple who were willing to do that. Even though they don't meet, they never met Andrea and Pirko in person, they were still, still so eager to express their judgment on them. Um, that it was, um, it was difficult to hear those things back. The camera sort of became part of their healing process and I also learned from them. I mean, I started reflecting upon my life and how I talk to my family, how I uh, respond to these kind of situations. And I also feel that in the audience members who watch the film. So I think when someone sees another person making that step, and they're sort of inspired by that you would feel that it's the most easiest thing in the world to say a little sentence like this out loud that this happened to me and, but because of the nature of psychology when it happens to you it's one of the most difficult things to do that and especially for children so when a child dares to speak up uh, I think uh, it is a responsibility for the adults to listen to them. It's like not one moment, you know, when you can... It's more, um, it's more like an atmosphere or a mood within the family when you feel that their energy sort of shifted from, um, from a very low point uh, into a more stable one, where they're uh, very easily connecting to other people, not shutting off, and psychologically they are healing and in a much better place. The prisoner of Wakhan follows a man, Nuruhak, who comes from a nomadic tribe in northeastern Afghanistan. He has been invited to move to a city in Kyrgyzstan with his wife and children. There, he must decide whether the new opportunities are worth leaving behind his people a nomadic way of life. The film gives a unique glimpse into the lives of nomadic peoples not often represented in media. The director, Janiel Jusuf John, is a native Kyrgyz speaker and even grew up in the town where Nuruhak and his family have been relocated. My name is Janiel Jusuf John and I was born in Kyrgyzstan. 
I worked for Radio Free Europe for um, like 20 years. Then in 2015, I decided to go and do film. In fact, I was reporting about these people uh, of high Pamirs, who are majority are nomad Kyrgyz, uh, since uh, early 2000. After the Soviet Union fell, people started coming to uh, Kyrgyzstan and I met some people who studied them and they told me and sh they showed me the articles and I looked and I said, it was in German. I said, I have no idea. So this was first two uh, uh, impressions I got from German article and uh, how they moved from Afghanistan to Turkey. Part of them, and the remaining, were still living there. When Janiel found out about these tribes, she was eager to learn more. I went to China, I went to Tajikistan, I was just reporting from there because nobody was reporting. They were minority, insignificant, they did not exist. If you are nomad, you don't exist in the mind of people, in a way. <laughs> so that's why I was just coming to this film really long, long way, I would say that. Kyrgyzstan started 2005 delivering humanitarian aid to Vahan. Everybody was so happy, we are helping our people who are dying out, who are in the verge of disappearance, which is true, physical disappearance. It's so hard, oxygen level is so low. So we knew it was very difficult for them. And I started thinking of making a documentary uh, about humanitarian aid. Unfortunately, just when she was beginning to construct her plan for a documentary, she was blocked by the Kyrgyz and Afghan governments. Luckily, she knew someone who could help her bypass the journalist block. After some people reported uh, the obvious corruption about the humanitarian aid, and eventually they just blocked journalists. In the meantime, the Kyrgyzstan brought the Kyrgyz, uh, this Nurulhak tribe, to, uh, to Narin, and I, am, I was born in Narin now. It's my town. Uh, I know a woman who was a correspondent, my colleague, who became chief of, chief of KGB. I did not know that. Uh, I knew that she was representative of president, but I did not know that representative of president is basically uh, security services. And she helped me because you needed a cover, like uh, Russian criminals always need a cover. <laughs> <laughs> to make a film, I needed this cover. I had to be very careful with what I said, with whom I talked. Uh, and Kyrgyzstan is uh, not exactly Russia. You can film without permission. And you, you know, journalists are very active. So people are sort of accept. And because Nurul Haq and his family were open to me, it worked well. She was lucky to come across a subject as open as Nurul Haq. Nurul Haq was there, he was young and uh, he had this uh, energy and playful, but at the same time I understand he was good in the camera and he was willing to talk and show his life. And we talked to him, I said, do you want we make a film with you? And he said, yes. So I was lucky and he was also consistent, not like he said yes, and after that, no. They're so afraid of this woman, um, government people, and they're tired, whatever you say. Uh, but in fact, we had very good relation, and we still have. We trust each other. And I don't know, it worked. I never before filmed much men. I always feel more, I was more filming women. Janiel is doubtful about her film inspiring any drastic policy change, but she imagines the best case scenario as an opening of the borders. They would open Tajik-Afghan border, and these people would come to Tajikistan because the road is straight. Soviet tanks went there, straight into Vahan in uh, 1979. It is two hours by car you arrive to civilization, it's normal life. So they can bring, they can come, the children can study there, and they will be free because this is their land. And uh, internationally, if there is a humanitarian intervention, there is a conversation, uh, then uh, something, more things can be done because these people, you understand, they want their land. Understanding Kyrgyz life before and after Soviet occupation, she says, is critical. There are no roads, no hospitals, no, basically nothing, no shops. But they also have no prison, no police, no army, uh, um, no criminality, no abuse of children, uh, women, very peaceful nation. And 
My background was that with the Soviet Union, many things were destroyed. And now what we have in Kyrgyzstan, just unbelievable how we decreated in terms of, um, for example, women's rights. Uh, I mean, something improved, but uh, there are new things which is unacceptably, horribly difficult. We have just to be careful and hopeful. Keeping the Faith is a documentary about four Czech people's experience with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or ALS. The film provides an intimate look at their coping strategies and the barriers of accessibility that they face. The director, Veronica Stelikova, worked with the ALSA organization to bring light to these issues. Uh, moje jméno je Veronika Stehlíková, uh, pracuji jako dokumentární režisér, nebo moje role v tom filmu byla uh, režijní. Uh, já jsem dostala nabídku od producentky toho filmu, uh, která se pohybovala uh, v Alze, což je společnost jediná v Čechách, která pomáhá lidem s amyotrofickou laterální sklerózou. A já jsem ze začátku váhala hodně, protože to téma mě přišlo hodně těžký a měla jsem za sebou děti úplňku což byl film o těžkých autistech, takže jsem si říkala, co se další takovýhle těžký téma. Ale potom vlastně, když jsem se potkala s těma protagonistama, tak jsem věděla, že je dobrý být u toho a dobrý to zkusit udělat. Bylo to tak, že Alza některý pacienty vytipovala a řekla jim o tom, že by, že by bylo možné do tohohle projektu vstoupit. A ty, co řekli, že možná by je to zajímalo, tak byli potom ochotní se setkat se mnou a pak už, pak už jsme vlastně o tom mluvili, co přesně by to obnášelo, kdyby jim vlezli do domu filmaři a, a byli tam s nima vlastně i v, jako ve velmi, no, velmi dlouho a velmi, ve velmi jako intimních okamžicích. Despite the intense filming commitment, she says that the subjects were more than eager to share their stories. Byli ochotní uh, a dokonce vlastně to chtěli. A já jsem se ptala, proč? A většina z nich mě vlastně řekla, že když se jim stalo něco takhle hroznýho, tak to, že budou v tom filmu, tak můžou pomoct dalším lidem a vlastně i sobě to nějakým způsobem jako projít. A někteří už to pak jako docela užívali, že, že jsme pro ně byli jako zpestření v té rutině každodenní. My jsme uvažovali, že budeme točit zhruba tři roky. Jednak nám to přišel jako dobrý čas na to, kdy se dá něco ukázat a jednak jsme byli jako limitovaní i finančně hodně, protože ten film byl hodně nízko za a bylo jako těžký na něj jako průběžně nějak schánět peníze, protože tohle není téma, do kterého úplně by jako všichni se hrnuli z investicí. Pak do toho vstoupil covid, takže jsme nakonec točili čtyři roky. A my jsme měli strach, že to bude jako strašně smutný, protože během těch třech let podle těch všech prognoz zažijeme to, že všichni umřou. A je vlastně úplně úžasný, že se to nestalo, že umřel jeden, jenom jeden člověk, jenom Alenka umřela. A vlastně teďka zažíváme to, že oni chodí s náma na debaty po filmu a jsou tam a užívají si to, že ten film je jako dodělaný. A to je, to je strašně krásný. Jo. Although she believes it is more a question for also than her, she thinks that care for the disease in Czechia lags behind some other countries. Myslím si, že, že v Česku anebo obecně jako ve východní Evropě je to trošku těžší, protože jsme víc pozadu jako se sociálníma službama, se systémem pomůcek, s, nakonec i s psychoterapií. Takže myslím si, že oproti třeba západním zemím máme co dohánět. Máme co dohánět. O Skandinávii ani nemluvě, kde ten systém je nastavený, takže to je jako daleko jednodušší. No. Já si myslím, že, že jenom to, že se to téma otvírá, že se o tom točí film, že se na to lidi dívají, takže to může obrovsky pomoct. Že ta nemoc trošku vstoupí ve známost. Ona, jak to má hodně málo lidí, tak se o ní moc neví, protože to není tak zajímavý jako pro výzkumy, pro donace. Takže si myslím, že to, že o tom ví víc lidí, víc lidí se tím zabejvá, tak, tak prostě tak to, že může jako strašně pomoct. Vlastně všichni, co se toho zúčastnili, tak nám to jako měnilo postupně život. A no to zní jako kliše, ale všechny nás to vedlo k tomu si uvědomovat, co je jako opravdu důležitý, co opravdu chceme. A vedlo nás to, myslím, všechny k takové jako větší pokoře a, a vděčnosti za to, co jako máme na tomhle světě. E, jako mám pocit, že ten film je hlavně těch protagonistů. Že my jsme jenom byli jako kolem a dali jsme to dohromady. Ale že, že jako hrozně bych chtěla jako vyzdvihnout to, že oni do toho šli. E, a ty, a ty pečující, že, že zkrátka to je jako, jako pro ně a o nich.